At around 5.30 p.m., a man was driving along Kilkari Road in Sanol when he thought he saw a girl lying motionless on the side of the road. He got out of his car to investigate and saw that the girl had her pants pulled down and shirt pulled up. But what was most shocking was the rose-colored necktie wrapped around her neck, along with a plastic bag that covered her face. When an officer arrived, the girl surprisingly was still breathing. According to the officer, she barely looked human, as if her face had been beaten in with a rock. She arrived at the ER at 6.11 p.m., but unfortunately, just eight minutes later, she was pronounced dead. The girl was later revealed to be 14-year-old Kelly Poppleton. Her family was distraught and wondered who could do this to their daughter. On December 9th, a girl named Trina Bentz came to police with an admission. According to Trina, they were all involved in an underground drug operation at the school and that Kelly had planned to snitch on them. She claimed that her and another girl, Cynthia Rapond, lured Kelly to a nearby liquor store where another 17-year-old boy and 27-year-old drug dealer, Julian Ramirez, were waiting. They wanted to teach her a lesson, which meant shoving Kelly into Julian's car and beating her with brass knuckles in a billy club, all while they drove through Niles Canyon. She then claimed that they stopped the car and Julian and the other boy sexually assaulted Kelly and choked her with a rose-colored necktie. They then drove to Kilkari Road and dumped her body and fled the scene. Cops arrested all people involved and the story received widespread media attention. But just as fast as the story hit the news, things began to fall apart. You see, the supposed drug ring at the junior high that Trina talked about didn't actually exist. Police kept questioning Trina, and her story kept changing, oftentimes contradicting itself, until finally it was evident that the entire thing was made up. Naturally, people were outraged. Not only had this tarnished the reputation of all parties involved, with Julian Ramirez even getting stabbed in the neck while he waited in jail, but valuable time was wasted on collecting key statements from witnesses. But how had this 13-year-old concocted such a story? Well, apparently she lived in the same apartment complex as Julian Ramirez. He was, in fact, a known drug dealer, and it's very likely she had witnessed his activity. Other than that, she had simply used details that she had already heard from the news. Kelly's case seemed to die down after. Kelly's family eventually moved from town. But then, in 1997, police began to look at the case again. And there were two people of interest that hadn't been considered before. Those two men were James DeVaggio and Michael Ide. James DeVaggio was a serial rapist most notorious for the brutal rape and murder of Vanessa Lee Sampson. On December 2, 1997, James and his partner Michelle McCaud kidnapped the Pleasanton girl as she walked a short distance to her job. They tortured the girl in their van as they drove to Lake Tahoe before strangling her with a rope. The couple were picked up the next day by the FBI. They were also charged for assaulting numerous other women, including DeVaggio's own 16-year-old daughter and Michelle McCaud's 12-year-old daughter. In 2002, they were both sentenced to death. So how does this tie in with Kelly Poppleton? Well, DeVaggio grew up in the Pleasanton area and worked in Sonol at the time where Kelly's body was found. Also, according to the book Rope Burns, DeVaggio allegedly knew the motorists that found Kelly's body on the side of the road. Could this be a coincidence, or could the man have helped partake in Kelly's murder? Another person of interest is Michael Ide. Michael Ide was also a serial rapist and murderer. He was found guilty of raping and murdering a San Lorenzo High School student named Lisa Monzo. In 1984, he had abducted her when he saw her leaving a doctor's appointment. Her body was later found near railroad tracks not far from her school. The case went unsolved until 1996 when he was linked through DNA evidence. He was already serving a life sentence in Washington for the rape and murder of another woman named Ellen Parker. In 1997, he was sentenced to death for the murder of Lisa Monzo. 
I'd lived near the area that Kelly Poppleton had last been seen. He was also known to strangle and rape his victims. Interestingly enough, both Michael Ide and James DeVeggio attended the same continuation school that was adjacent to the school Kelly attended before moving to Fremont. Sadly, neither men have been anything more than a person of interest, and there hasn't been any recent updates in the case of Kelly Poppleton.